DNA is a really interesting concept which we hear all the time. It's a long molecule which consists of spiral nucleic acids twisted into a double helix. DNA is also the ultimate controller and producer of genes. Genes are units individuals inherit from their parents such as eye color, height, resemblance, etc. Now, with a molecule carrying so much essential information and codes, don't you think it's necessary to duplicate it so as to create more DNA? The process by which this DNA is duplicated is known as DNA replication. There are four major organized stages and equally four major role players known as enzymes involved in this process. The first stage involved is known as replication fork formation. So yeah, before DNA can be replicated, the first enzyme helicase has to break up the hydrogen bond between the nitrogenous base pairs. This results in two independent strands. Now you must be wondering, what are nitrogenous base pairs, where are they found and what do they do? Nitrogenous base pairs are contained in the DNA strand and are complementary to each other. They are paired as adenine, thiamine, cytosine and guanine. I just really like to use the mnemonic apple tree car garage for easier retention. Second, it comes the primer bonding and is carried out by the enzyme primers. Primers attaches primers made of RNA to the starting point of the DNA strand. This makes way for DNA polymerase to start the third process of elongation. DNA polymerase attaches new strands to the site of the primer. The primer was important because without them, DNA polymerase wouldn't know where to start from. DNA polymerase runs in the 5' primer to 3' primer end. It like needs a sense of direction to start the replication process. Think of navigating an area or a town which you've never been to. It could be really difficult without a description or direction of some sort. After DNA polymerase binds the first independent strand known as the leading strand, here comes the complicated part of DNA replication. The DNA is directional, signified by a 5' primer and 3' primer end. But when the DNA is unzipped, the independent strands become opposite in direction and DNA polymerase can only proceed in the 5' primer to 3' primer direction. Therefore, the lagging strand begins binding multiple primers which are only bases apart. DNA polymerase then fills in the gap between the primers with Okazaki fragments. And the final stage is known as termination. Of course, we can't just leave the primers on the DNA strand, so exonucleus comes and replaces the primers with original bases and two new DNA strands are formed. One more thing, don't you proofread or recheck your work before handing it over to avoid errors of any kind? Well, in this process, the same method applies. Another exonucleus carefully proofreads the work to ensure that no bases are incorrectly paired. For example, adenine pairing with guanine instead of thiamine. And in the end, two DNA strands are formed, each with one old original strand and one new strand.